When I was little, my father was famous. He was the greatest samurai in the empire. He cut off the heads of 131 lords. He was the greatest samurai in the empire. And he took me with him. Hey everybody, there's this one claim that moon landing and globe deniers have made over and over again and has always irritated me and I thought I'd take the opportunity to address it and put it to rest. Photos like this one of astronaut Jack Schmidt during Apollo 17 where he and the Earth are seen in the same shot have been claimed to be fake by many people. There's the claim that if you tweak the levels of the photo, the cutting and pasting evidence is revealed and I have a video showing that to be uneducated nonsense. But there's another claim, and that's that the Earth in these photos is too small. They say, the Earth is supposed to be four times the size of the moon, yet in these photos it looks the same size as the moon. NASA can't even fake their photos correctly. And this is one of those situations where the denier's claimed mastery of common sense comes up short. Because common sense says, in order to compare the apparent size of the Earth in this photo from the moon, you would need to compare it to a similar photo of the moon taken from Earth. But do they do that? No. They pull up the photo and go, that looks the same size to me. End of story. NASA is dumb. And when I look at the photo, honestly, I have to say, it kind of looks the same size as the moon looks to me when I look at it. But the thing is, I know that my looking at this photo of the Earth and looking at the moon is not an honest comparison. When I look at this, when we look at this, we are able to see the entire field of view of the Hasselblad camera at once. It's all there. But when we look at the world with our own eyes, this whole area may be our field of view, but we're only really able to take in about that much. Like, right now, you're looking at me run my mouth and move my hands around, but as long as you're looking right here at my face, you can't read the timestamp of the video. In order to do that, you'll have to move your area of focus to around here, and you might be able to read it, maybe even further down. But once you move your attention back over to this mug, that timestamp down there is gone to you. The denier's big claim is that they trust their senses, but it's the limitation of their senses that causes them to make this fraudulent claim. Now, I know right now there are some of you that are shaking your head and saying, no, speak for yourself, Jerry. Don't you claim to know how my senses work? But I can guarantee that while you were looking down here at this timestamp, you didn't notice the little Fisher Price figure up in this corner over here. It's not there now, it's over here. Well, it was. You missed it, which was my point. But let's bring it back to the moon. Have you ever gone out at night and seen a big, beautiful moon and said, man, I need to get a picture of that. And you pull out your camera and you take a picture of it and you look at it and think, oh man, that moon is just way too small. <sighs> Come on, that just doesn't translate to that. And the reason is, when you look at the moon, you're only noticing a small portion of your entire field of view. And the moon takes up a good percentage of that area. The camera, however, captures the entire field of view, and you can see it all at once when you look at it, the picture. And the moon is just a little piece of that field of view and thus looks way too small. The same thing happens to the Earth in that Jack Schmidt photo and in these other lunar photos. The, the Earth just ends up looking too small. So how do we compare the Earth as seen from the Moon to the Moon as seen from Earth? Well, my thought was, since in this Apollo 17 photo, we have a person of known size in the shot, if we were to get a person of similar size in a photo of the Moon from Earth, we could do a reasonable, if imperfect, comparison. This past weekend, my nephew came by with his motorcycle. Now, while he is far too big to stand in for Jack Schmidt, my son Malachi, whom you may remember from this video when he was six years old. Say hi to the internet, Malachi. Hi, internet. Or from this video when he was 12. Well, I'll say because 
when you look at it from Earth, um, the light is affected by the air. Is now 14 and at a little over 5 foot 9 and 160 pounds is pretty much the exact same size as Schmidt was during the Apollo 17 mission. So I stuck him in his cousin's helmet and one of my winter coats and put him in a photo with the moon. There he is. Now the moon is a bit glowy in this shot, so I'm going to adjust the exposure to get a real sense of the moon's size. That will make everything dim down a bit. I recorded it as video because one, it would be harder for people to claim that it's fake, and two, so you can see even as I move the camera toward and away from my astronaut, the size of the moon doesn't change as long as I don't actually zoom in because the moon is far away. Moving a foot closer to my son makes a difference in his size, but a foot closer to the moon doesn't affect the moon size, as you can see from these stills here. As for the photo of the Earth from the moon, I don't believe zooming in and out was an option. And besides, for someone to argue that this photo was affected by the zoom settings, they would have to concede that the photo was real. What I can say, is that given the Earth appears to be the same size in each of these photos taken at different times, the camera is at the same setting every time. Now, I'm going to do something fairly simple. I'm going to roughly trace the shape of my son wearing his motorcycle helmet, and then I'm going to position this photo of Jack Schmidt such that he and my son are the same size. I'm going to do this to give a sense of scale. I could just crop my image of the moon and compare it to a cropped photo of the Earth and say, See? It's bigger. And you guys would rightly call BS because with no sense of scale, I can crop this whichever way I want and tell you whatever story I want. Like, see? Look how small the moon is compared to the Earth. Doing it this way gives us a 5 foot 9 inch tall guy in a helmet standing 2 or 3 feet away from the camera with the moon in the background that we can compare to a 5 foot 9 inch tall guy in a helmet standing 2 or 3 feet away from the camera with the Earth in the background a sense of scale, and me being an honest broker. Is this perfect? No, there are a number of factors adding to the margin of error, an important one being the difference in the fields of view in the cameras used. Everything I can find shows that the field of view of the Hasselblad used in on the moon landing photo was from five to seven degrees wider than my camera, which would make the Earth appear smaller than it would with my camera, by the way. But let's see the results. It appears to me that the Earth as seen from the moon looks considerably bigger than the moon does when seen from Earth, just like it's expected to. We just needed to compare them in photos with similar circumstances instead of just relying on our senses and our limited access to those senses to tell us the story. But that's why we use cameras, right? To capture information because our senses and our recall cannot be relied upon, right? Because as much as you deniers, moon landing or globe, as much as you say you can trust your senses, you did not catch how many times the bobbleheads moved on my shelf during this video. But the camera did. Take care. Is this perfect? No. There are a number of factors adding to the margin of error. An important one being the difference in the field of views of the camera's views. Fields of view? Fields of view. But let's see the results. It appears to me that the Earth has seen just like it's expected to. We just needed to compare. It appears to me that the Earth as seen from the moon looks considerably bigger than the moon does when seen from Earth. Just like, ah.